The 28th annual uh, Goldman Sachs Global Retailing Conference taking place in New York City. Our Brian Sazi sat down with Tractor Supply CEO Hal, Hal, Hal Lalton to discuss the current state of the retail market. We're a very different retailer than most that are out there. We're a lifestyle retailer focused on the out here lifestyle. We sell everything from apparel for brands like Carhartt to pet food to animal feed, uh, all the way to truck tool and hardware to garden. So it's really all things you need to live life out here. And for us, our consumer, you know, kind of a little bit of a stimulus slide from last year and a little bit of heat and drought and kind of delayed spring. But other than those few things, which you can kind of weed out through the data, our business has been eerily consistent, stable, and resilient um, you know, throughout all this year on top of over 50% growth of the last two years. None of that is normal in retail. The only thing we've heard in retail the past two months is bloated inventory and markdown. So that uh, definitely stands out. I think you call your consumer the gentleman farmer, right? What is the gentleman farmer? Yeah, I mean, so Tractor Supply dominantly focuses on folks, people who want to live life out here. Uh, and they typically are in exurban and rural markets, uh, anywhere from a half acre to more in, 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 in space and yard size and land size. And they're farmers, they're ranchers, uh, and they just love the rural lifestyle. But the vast majority of our customers living on their land is not their primary means. Uh, and so that's where we kind of this hobby farmer uh, concept comes out. It's, it's a hobby for them. It's a lifestyle for them. Uh, and, I, and we always talk about our customer uh, uh, pursues that lifestyle with a passion just like a teenager does their iPhone. Wow, I was just thinking, wow, I really need to get a house because I do not have, I can't even be a hobby farmer, uh, duly noted. So take us through uh, what you're seeing in the business with the drought. You mentioned that some of these conditions in the Midwest, certainly on the West Coast, these are serious, serious conditions. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it was a, a delayed start to spring and then, you know, the heat came pretty quickly pretty quickly, so spring was compressed this past year. That's all was reflected in our Q2 results that we've already announced. But what we did say in our Q2 earnings call was that this quarter, we in Q3, kind of some of the upside uh, potential in the quarter got muted a bit to where we're gonna perform right in line with our guidance. Uh, and that, that upside potential got muted really because of the drought. If you look at the heat that, that uh, we had throughout almost all of July and half of August, uh, particularly down in Texas, Oklahoma, all the way to New Mexico, California still in a massive heat wave, you know, record breaking temperatures yesterday. Uh, and, and when that happens, you know, it creates uh, less demand for the types of products we have. But, you know, most of that is, is, uh, has as uh, you know, the kind of rains have come through, some lower temperatures have come through. We're starting to see that across the majority of the country now. Most of that is those drought conditions have kind of dissipated. Uh, we're seeing very strong business performance uh, really across the, the bulk of the country, you know, with the one exception of California still kind of going through that. How are you planning for the holiday shopping season? Is it a big season for you? Are you looking for a strong season, solid season? How are you thinking about it? So uh, t our quarters are plus or minus a per one percentage point from being a fourth of the, of the year each for us. And so the fourth quarter is an important quarter, uh, but we don't have kind of outsized Black Friday and, and Cyber Week sales like other retailers. Uh, we're a very demand-driven, needs-based business, and so there's kind of this base business that happens uh, throughout. Um, you know, and also I don't expect, you know, we're in very good inventory position right now and uh, high quality, uh, our inventory levels on a three-year basis are well below our sales growth on a three-year basis. So very different than many other retailers or most other retailers out there. So we don't have kind of this overhang that's going to drive a promotional behavior, any additional promotional behavior. On promotions, we're, uh, we're running below last year's levels and below 2020 levels and even below, you know, well below 2019 so not getting levels. So this discounting wave. So is. not swept up in this discounting wave. Inventory is in great shape, little to no obsolescence issues, nothing outside of the ordinary. And, uh, you know, we expect to have a very good fourth quarter. Uh, and we think consumer spending and behavior will basically remain as about it is now. This is a budget planning season for many public companies. What are you working on next year? So you're in the pet business. How many stores will you open in terms of pets, tractor supply locations? Yeah, we're in the, uh, in the midst of our five-year strategy, our life out here strategy. By the end of this year, we'll have 30% of our stores with what we call Project Fusion, which is our inside the store remodel program. We'll have nearly 15% of our stores with garden centers. Uh, we will have opened one of our new three distribution centers. And next year is 
will continue to be much of the same. Where we'll do another two or three hundred fusion stores. We'll do another 150 to 200 garden centers. We'll also open up another distribution center in Arkansas. We'll continue to make technology investments. Uh, and that's all focused on achieving our long-term growth guidances of kind of mid single digit comps, another two or three points of sales growth due to new store build outs um, and a continued growth in our digital business. So we think next year will be you know, much, uh, much more the same as we've been executing this year. Uh, I can't help myself. I hear you're a big Yahoo Finance user, power user. Big, big fan of Yahoo Finance, use it every single day, have all my stocks loaded in there and also check out all the content on the main Yahoo Finance page. So nice job by you and the team for Thanks. everything you all are doing there. Wow, Brian Sazi eliciting a little uh, endorsement there uh, from Hal Lawton there at the end of his interview with the Tractor Supply CEO. Saz is with us now from that Goldman Sachs retail conference. Well done there on that, Saz. I, you know, you keep you keep talking about not having a house and that you need a house in order to do some of this. I think you should take up sort of like apartments, farming, urban homesteading. There are there are options open to you. I think you should have asked a lot in more detail about those options. You know what, Julie, you should inspire me. I think I'm going to go start <laughs> irrigating the courtyard of my co-op development. I'm about to start spreading out some grass seed and some, some chicken feed. But, you know, the bottom line is here, you know, I also have to, of course, get Hal a, a subscription, a free subscription to Yahoo Finance Plus. But anyway, uh, overall, strong demand, uh, as suggested by Lawton. He presented here at Goldman Sachs, I believe. Uh, he finished his presentation at 845. Last time I checked before I came on here with y'all, uh, the stock was doing pretty well. Uh, pretty good things all considered, all things being considered from Tractor Supply CEO Hal Lawton. Uh, I think a lot of retailers here that, that are presenting are seeing inventory challenges, increased promotions, but you heard Lawton say they're not being swept up into, into that discounting wave. Very key signal there for traders and investors in our ecosystem right now on our platform buying and selling these stocks. And Brian, I got to tell you, uh, we're almost out of time here, but I'm really excited about becoming a gentleman farmer later in life. You can be, I could be plowing my fields and tilling them. Hey, in a it's in their annual diet, report, right? Jared. It's in the annual report. I never heard of a gentleman farmer, but you know what? Sure. It's in their annual report and I rolled with it. And you know what? It makes a lot of sense to me. It makes a lot of sense. Hey, I love it. And doing yeoman's, yo people's work down there. Thank you, Brian. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yes, great interview. <laughs>